Okay, uh, coming to you Friday night after the close, and it was one heck of a close way down, and it was one heck of a day, and it's, it's getting crazy out here. Um, recession on the horizon, and an unhinged president, and a trade war. Um, so let's start, I guess, with the trade war. Uh, first, China came out and uh, levied some retaliatory tariffs, and uh, Trump punched back right away and the market just was just hated it and don't blame them I don't like it much myself um, plus he was unhinged just all day I mean I don't know how um, you can see this president and not see that he's 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 unhinged and it's kind of kind of not all there um, and I'm not trying to be political I'm trying to be analytical and trying to understand the market and we don't like an unhinged president that could go off at any minute um, you know it's bad enough with these trade wars now he's calling his fed chair an enemy who's a bigger enemy his fed chair that he appointed um, or Xi President Xi or is it Prime Minister or President Xi of China and um I mean, neither of them are enemies. You know, a trade deficit, by the way, is not a bad thing. It just means we get more goods from them than they get from us. But we're getting a cheaper price for it. We're getting value for it. We're actually saving money. Um, so it just makes no sense what's going on. And the market is... you, you got to wake up to it that we got an unhinged president. I'm going to say it as nicely as I can that he's unhinged. Okay? And you got to deal with it. And there's a recession that they're also denying is possible. And true, it's not here just yet, but it looks very imminent according to all the economists. And uh, if you don't play it, I mean, if you want to pretend there's no recession, fine. Buy all the high tech you can find. Buy some high, uh, small cap, see how that works out for you. So anyways, uh, gold was up today, as you can imagine, it's been up for a while. We made a call on August, uh, we did a video, let's, let's call that, we did a video on August 1st when uh, there, was, there was some other issue, more trade war, I believe, and um, more trade war issue, we're saying, hey, people flock to the gold, here's the ones we like, and they were uh, B2 gold, um, Kirkland, Bar Barrick, Torx, Predium. And since that time, uh, well, we have the returns right here. Let's uh, describe this um, uh, this chart here, uh, or table, really. Uh, okay, so the first column is a return uh, for one day, just on the Friday, August 23rd, when we were doing this. And, you know, all the golds were up. In fact, Predium was up 9.6, and Torx was up 5%. So... They were on a bit of a tear. Meanwhile, the market's getting absolutely pummeled. The S&P was down 2.6%. That's a big move on the downside. So, you know, gold was the only place to be, virtually the only place to be. Over since August 1st, when we first introduced these Fab Five as our favorite altogether, we've actually talked about them in the past as well. But um, th there's the column there, and you can see like Predium was up 25%. And, Torx is up 19, etc. You can just read the graphic there. But the S&P is down 4.5. So again, gold's a place to go. Over the last three months, we got Predium up 72. We got Torx up 69. And the market's like virtually flat, 0.7% in three months. Okay, so I want to go over these quickly. I'm still not backing down. This run-up in gold is warranted. We're not chasing it. We're, we're positioning it because of what's going on in the world. And I don't think it's a chase. I really do not. Price of gold strong. There's lots of craziness. People flock to gold. I'm not going to get into why people buy gold and why they don't. Um, but it's a hedge. I will tell you that. So this, this may appear like it's negatively correlated. In other words, it does the opposite of what the S&P does. That's not true. It happened to, in this case... But it's actually net, uh, zero correlated. Like, there is no correlation. So the S&P could start going up, and gold could still keep going up, too. So I like it for that reason, too. 
uh, from a portfolio point of view. It can. It, it really just has its own mind. It, it does not follow the S and P five hundred. It does not do the opposite of the S and P five hundred. It just does its own thing. And I'd say right now, it could do the opposite because I'm more of a, a bit of a bear right now on the S and P. And I think gold looks good here. So uh, I'm going to quickly go over these. I already went over them on August 1st. However, we did get some data in too, but I just quickly remind ourselves what's going on or what we why we like them and what they look like. And they're, they're a little bit different. Each one of them's got their own little nuances and probably worth looking at. All right, so first up, just happens to be the one that's up here is Torx Gold, uh, $1.3 billion market cap. Uh, that's U.S. dollars and uh, good balance sheet, not too much debt at all, a little bit of working capital, it's good. Improving return on investing capital through three, four years here. Love that. Came out from, you know, negative, you know, building the mine, building the mine, and then finally it starts cash flow positive and cash flow keeps going up, cash flow return on invested capital. Okay, so awesome. Love that. And the valuation is actually very reasonable. All right, next up, Predium. Predium is actually kind of similar. 2.5 billion dollar market cap, similar in that uh, you know no returns for a while. Building the mine, building the mine, now earning a seven percent return. Looks like it could go higher. Um, and they've invested about 1.7 billion at this point uh, in earning about 180 million in EBITDA. Good balance sheet. You know you gotta like that. And good jurisdiction, by the way, uh, in uh, BC. So Canadian uh, was always a good jurisdiction. Uh, next, these are in no particular order, by the way. Kirkland Lake, oh yeah, absolute gem, another Canadian jurisdiction in Ontario. Um, lowest cost producer in the world of gold. And uh, look at the returns, 22%. This does not happen in gold. This is one of the best gold charts I've ever seen in terms of uh, the financials. I mean, the only one flying the ointment is, is the stock has run. I mean, but it should have run. It, it, it still can go more. It's almost hard to believe when you look at it. Um, you know, it's up 72% on a three-year CAGR. That means three years in a row, 72%. And that's on top. Like, it's compounded. That's what the CAGR means. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, still looks good, though. I mean, it's still not overvalued. So, whew, it's an absolute gem, absolute gem. B2 Gold, uh, a little different than the others. It's a little more cyclical. Um, it's it's kind of a mid-tier, let's call it. Uh, 3.5 billion market cap, really good balance sheet, only 500 million in debt. Uh, as I said, cyclical, peaked back 2010. Returns came down, kind of sputtered a little bit back and forth. Uh, but mostly, let's just say, a little bit higher than than between 2013 to 2016 and, and higher now because of higher gold prices. So like this one, pretty good. Um, and last but not least is Barrick. And Barrick is a different animal. It's a you know the mega cap. I think it is the biggest gold company in the world. Uh, returns peaked back in 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. And then this kind of fell out of bed as gold prices kind of trickled down, trickled down, uh, and really hit actually almost zero. And now um, they're still at zero. However, they do have positive cash flow. I can't get into the nuances, but because we're calculating an IRR and not just a ratio, you can have positive cash flow and yet zero or even slightly negative uh, return on invested capital. Right? That's a nuance. Let's just say it's, it's zero with some positive cash flow. They do need to improve to about 8% to, well, to justify $26 prices trading at 19. And by the way, this is US dollars, so I know I got a lot of Canadian watchers, but uh, they report in US dollars, so we're gonna go ahead and use the US chart. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's our rundown. We would stick with them. This, this upside that we've seen in the gold to me, it's not over. It's still a good hedge, regardless. Um, so, I just, I just don't think it's, it's not time to sell these. The, the recession hypothesis is still there. The unhinged president hypothesis is still there. The trade war hypothesis is still there. Uh, none of that has changed. The risk is high right now in the market, which makes gold 
the place to go. I'm sticking with that. And these are five names we really like. Thank you for watching our investment video. This is the same analysis we provide to our institutional clients. Want to improve your portfolio? Simply subscribe to our YouTube channel below, or better yet, go to our video website at video.fsavaluation.com and get access to the entire library.